Hi and welcome to Mojo Lab, uh, the place to explore making films with your smartphone. Um, I guess it's uh, generally well known that most modern smartphones these days are capable of shooting really good video. Um, so good in fact that uh, they have even been used to make feature films with. Um, and although every smartphone or every modern smartphone comes with a built-in app to actually shoot video with. Uh, there are one or two um, additional uh, bits and pieces that one can use to uh, make the results even better than the fabulous ones you get with uh, it straight out of the box. There are several real kind of um, pr little problems that um, one encounters when using a smartphone to make videos. It's so light and relatively small which is the reason why it's so powerful as a storytelling device because you can get much more intimate with your subjects but because they're so small they tend to be rather difficult to hold still it's rather you know wobbly at times and also it's often very hard to keep it level um, if, uh, well especially I find it hard to keep it level anyway uh, so the single thing that I think is most powerful in terms of turning this into uh, a occasional filmmaking device to being a regular filmmaking device is an app with, that is called Filmic Pro and Filmic Pro is available for all um, operating systems I use a uh, iPhone by choice but it works equally well with Android phones um, and what it does is to give you manual control over all sorts of things and some tools to help overcome the uh, instability that one suffers and also keep things level. So um, I'm going to load up um, a Filmic Pro on my phone here and, uh, and then we can switch to a screen recording to show much more about what's going on. So here we go, Filmic Pro, right. So um, the first thing one notices, of course, you've got a sound meter on the right hand side and uh, this circle and square or rectangle in the middle of the picture. Um, the circle uh, controls exposure. So as I move the circle around the different parts of the image, the exposure changes. Not so much in these conditions because uh, then, you know, they're fairly evenly lit but you can begin to see a variation in exposure. Um, now one of the big issues with using the regular phone uh, app is that um, as you move your phone around so the exposure automatically changes okay um, but with this app you can lock the exposure um, exposure lock here yeah, by clicking on the circle and making it go red and now the exposure is the same all over. Now I've chosen rather a dark, rather a bright bit, which makes the the, uh, the darker scenes in my room really dark. So let's try that again. I've locked my exposure on that door. We move around. Most of the exposure is within reasonable limits inside. Now, the rectangle is the area that the app's looking at to uh, judge focus. And if I move it around, um, you can see maybe that focus is changing. Now I can actually lock the focus again instead of the focus tracking automatically as it does with the native app. Um, if I double tap it, that uh, area uh, that is uh, looking for focus gets bigger so you don't have such major focus changes. Okay, The same thing happens with my exposure control on the circle if I double tap it you can now see it's opened up and it's actually taking an average of the whole scene or a much much larger part of the whole scene so I'll go back to normal now um, in the native uh, phone app you don't have any control over uh, the aperture and the focus uh, options um, but with this app you can gain manual control over both. Now I've got a control over the uh, uh, exposure okay, on the one hand 
and on the other I've got control over focus so I can actually pull focus if I wanted to so if I go here I can whoops I can pull focus between the background and the foreground okay actually I think I might just to change exposure a bit there you go make it a bit easier to see actually better exposed so from there from the mouse to the background okay so full manual control over both exposure and focus um, also uh, on the uh, professional version the professional version is only around 15 time uh, 15 pounds at the time of recording um, you can have control over the color balance too so the color balance is as you can see changing as I move around my room here uh, but I can lock the color balance um, by uh, clicking on the auto white balance button now the white balance is locked and is the same wherever I look within my room again manual control something that you don't have um, in the native app um, you also get uh, camera controls that um, one's usually familiar with on more professional cameras um, such as uh, exposure peaking whoops let's go to manual again and get control over this showing under and overexposed regions of the image uh, and false color um, for judging exposure and in a more general way and also focus peaking that you would expect to see in a professional camera but not necessarily on a smartphone so it's come out of that and you if you tap on the bottom of your picture uh, you'll see there is a um, record of the time of recording you tap again and there's a histogram you tap again and there's a histogram parade showing the uh, three colors red green and blue tap again and we see the waveform uh, it also shows you battery condition on the right and also the amount of space you've got left on your recording medium um, so pretty pretty uh, useful stuff there but it goes beyond that so I did mention um, that uh, there was a problem over actually holding it still and you'll probably notice that it's all over the place in terms of stability whilst I'm demonstrating this but if I turn on the stabilizer here by clicking stabilization um, the whole uh, image becomes much much more stable which is a brilliant thing in itself and then um, if I turn on a guide we get rid of this for a moment that menu we've now got a graticule in uh, superimposed on top of the uh, image here and so it's much easier to keep the phone level right a few more things to go through very quickly uh, first of all you can change the resolution of your recording and also the aspect ratio of your recording um, I've got the recording set at 4K, uh, well UH, UHD actually, and I've got the codec, um, the system by which the image is recorded to the phone's memory, set to what's called filmic quality. There's um, Apple Standard, which is a lower quality codec, and that is the standard um, Apple codec used when you use the internal uh, recording app. Um, and that results in a not so brilliant uh, re uh, recording quality. Filmic quality is better and Filmic Extreme is better still, although really you can only use Filmic Extreme with 4K on a more modern, faster uh, phone. Uh, let's try and get some um, uh, better exposure here. There we go. Um, the other... Uh, uh, thing I was uh, mentioning here is of course the aspect ratio and you can shoot square you can shoot in pseudo cinema scope you can shoot in regular 4x3 or a more, more usual 16x9 okay, right um, and uh, we can 
also change the frame rate. So uh, setting it to 25 frames per second for use in Europe and 30 frames per second for use in um, the US. And then of course there's 24, 48, 50 and 60 as you can see. Now the grayed out 120 and 240 frames per second is available when shooting in um, HD not in 4K. Um, and uh, a, a variety of other um, components which we'll go into at a later date. For example, you can add various devices to uh, the, your phone. And in fact, in our next um, webinar, we'll look at um, additional ways uh, to help hold the camera still with uh, grips and um, tackle probably one of the most difficult things to overcome and that is the audio with the addition of an external microphone and then also look at the way in which we can change the angle of view that you get uh, with your standard phone by adding additional lenses but that's to come so I look forward to chatting with you again soon bye for now